Hi everybody, so energy harvesters, they've got a bit of a bad rap in terms of low power, but uh, let's be fair to them. Depending how you feel, of course, otherwise let's not, but let's pretend to be fair to them. In the situation you put them, the reason they don't work very well is not because of the energy harvester technology, that's actually quite impressive. It's because the energy they're trying to harvest is usually pretty low. It's kind of low winds or it's people walking over a pavement, that kind of thing. And so, although it doesn't matter because the applications they're put in are in applications that need milliwatts, it's a bit of an issue if you want to charge your Lexus. And that's been the state of play until now. Have a look at this. Yep, it's a train. <laughs> now, trains represent thousands of tons of force and every time you hear that click clack click clack click clack that's the train bouncing up and down on the tracks and it is wasted energy and it's a lot of wasted energy now that energy will happen whether we harvest it or not so if we can harvest that bouncing of thousands of tons then there's energy to be had there and a lot of energy because in the US alone there's something like 141,000 miles of track and until now it's been inaccessible. That is until the professors at Stony Brook University came up with this. The team say that a small unit like this is capable of generating in the region of 200 watts at somewhere around about 72% efficiency. And if we look at it, it's some kind of gearbox attached to what is an ordinary stepper motor. Now, 10,000 of these units in New York State alone would generate something in the region of $10 million worth of energy, and that's 3,500 megawatts, which is leagues above, orders of magnitude above what we think about when we think about energy harvesting and energy scavenging. Now, at the heart of that invention is this. This is called a mechanical movement rectifier. What it does is very similar to what an electronic rectifier does. It takes movement in any direction and turns it into movement in one direction only. And if you think about a rectifier, that's exactly what it does. It takes a waveform and turns it into DC. This does the same thing. It'll take a movement that goes up and down there and turn it into a single movement rotational movement there. And we used this in video 1906 as a wave generator and there's plenty of uses for a mechanical movement rectifier and it's what Stony Brook used in their energy scavenger for the railways because what happens is in here we used a ratchet. This is in fact a one-way bearing. Sometimes people call them sprag clutches but um, they're slightly different things but not enough that I care to argue about it. They're all pretty much the same thing. What they do is only allow the cog to turn one way freely and they snatch and close to prevent it turning the other way. And to get one to do that clockwise, that is turn freely clockwise but lock anti-clockwise, piece of cake. To reverse that, you flip them over. So you have them turning freely in opposite directions. One will go clockwise freely and lock in anti-clockwise, that's this one. This one will go anti-clockwise freely and lock in clockwise and it's connected to these two gears. So if I turn this spindle clockwise, it'll be able to drive that gear, which will drive that. If I turn it anti-clockwise, it locks, that gear doesn't turn. This one's able to drive, drives that gear and continues to turn that in the same direction, which is exactly how these work. Of course, I've done some Tinkercad files on this and they're freely available for anybody who wants to muck around with these STO files or print them for themselves. And you'll notice that in those files, there is only one bevel, one gear, and one sprag clutch roller bearing because they're identical. It's just that the sprag clutch is flipped over. One side faces out for one way, 
The other side faces out further the other way and you assemble them by pushing the gear onto the sprag clutch and pushing that into the little locating circle on the cog. Then of course we string them together with the spacer between an 8mm bar and then we get a couple of 22mm bearings in there and that makes that assembly. This main drive cog has a cog on it because that's where you will take your gear drive from to run your generator and that's all in one piece. So it really is a very simple thing thing to actually put together to do some wonderful stuff with. So the Stony Book machine has been gathering a lot of attention and winning awards right, left and centre because it's a huge breakthrough to be able to energy harvest in the order of megawatts. The Stony Brook machine at its heart is a mechanical movement regulator. It takes that up and down and turns it into a rotation of only one direction. I mean sure enough they've put a gear set on it because a train is going to have a lot of torque but there's not that much movement but then you can gear it up to lots of speed using a gear system and then they put a flywheel on it to even everything out and then they put a generator on that and the generator was nothing more than a stepper motor. So this breakthrough of megawatt power harvesting is available to everybody if they want to make one for themselves and I've put the STL files up in case you have a go at that. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.